Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Sai, and welcome to the Toyota Solutions Studio at the Woman in the World Summit. Our guest right now is Sarah Evans, who is a recipient of a 2017 Toyota Mother of Invention Award. Sarah, first of all, congratulations. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's a huge honor. So you, you have started a nonprofit organization that tries to bring clean water to impoverished African countries. First of all, tell me how this grant has been a game changer for you and for your organization. It has been a game changer already. Um, I'm one of the new mothers of invention, so it's only been a few months, but um, we're, we're, we've been a smaller nonprofit, and at the beginning of every year, we've always had to stop our project work in the field because of funding. Mm -hmm. And so this year, for the first time ever, we've just hit the ground running, and we already have eight active projects, which is unusual, so it's amazing. It is amazing. The, the organization is called Well Aware. Yes. Um, I'm aware of a, a lot of other organizations that are trying to accomplish something similar. Tell me what makes your organization unique. Well, we have a very high success rate. Um, we have a 100% success rate, where the industry average is about 40%. Mm -hmm. About 40% of water systems in Africa don't work a year after they've been implemented. Wow. Yes, so um, it's heartbreaking. Um, so when I first started this work, and uh, to be honest with you, we got really lucky on our first water system. That's why I'm here. But I realized then that we did get lucky and that all of these other water systems were not working. And so I really set my mind to forming a model and building a team that would create these water systems that would last and would have big impact for generations And to my come. understanding is the water systems that you guys are putting in place are actually rather simple when it comes to the technology. I mean, they're wells, right? Yes, so they are simple after implementation. So the technology is basic, um, although we are always improving, especially with our solar power. Um, but we put a lot of effort into designing our water systems and developing relationships with the community, mm -hmm. and that's part of what makes them so sustainable. Now, a lot of the people here at Women in the World are really focused on how innovative technologies can be deployed yes. to help people. As I was reading about Well Aware, your organization, I read that you found that when high tech is deployed in the wrong ways, it can actually be a problem. So talk a little bit about that and how your organization comes in at that point. Yes, and it's a difficult issue because, well, we all want a magic uh, bullet. You know, we all, sure. we, we all want something that will just solve this horrible crisis. However, we do see a lot of um, the technologies that pop up maybe not be thoroughly thought through as far as how culturally they will be embraced or um, how sustainable they are in the field or practical they are in the field. So we do see them failing quite often. And, What's unfortunate about it is, too, that a lot of resources are put into these kinds of projects mm -hmm. that then don't end up helping the communities and oftentimes end up hurting the communities because they rally around this new project or technology and invest their own resources and time, and then they're devastated. When so, for taken example, away. maybe their technology breaks and they don't have a technician that can fix it. So then how does Well Aware come in at that point? So it, it's twofold. So we create new systems that are built to last. Um, so we are not often called back to, to make repairs. And we also um, rehabilitate other systems that we've seen are broken. Not all broken systems are good candidates for rehabilitation, but some are, and in, in those cases we do go in and apply our sustainability model and rebuild the system to revive the community. And I read that your organization, as you said, really prioritizes efficiency. How do you make it possible to provide water to a community for a decade for only 20 bucks. How do you Crazy, do that? Crazy, right? <laughs> yes. um, so this is based on the, the work that we've done and the amount of money we've had to spend on these systems. Mm -hmm. So if we build it right the first time and use the technology that fits for the community and the solution is right for them, it's going to last for decades. And so it's, it cost, it's that nominal amount of money mm -hmm. to really change somebody's life in every way. Sarah, how did this become your cause, your impact on the world? Oh goodness, well, um, I was just recruited to help on a project in, in Kenya. And because of my legal background, I was gonna write up the paperwork and help raise some money. And I learned about the cause in a way that I, I, I had no idea really that this was happening in the world to the extent that it was. And so I was humbled. 
um, and I wanted to be a part of it. Uh, and I sort of changed the project up quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, we ended up building this water well, and then being on the ground that first time, um, there was this little girl who was following me around on the drill site, and it takes a couple of days. So we became really good friends, and we were always together. And when the water starts spewing out of the ground, mm. which is a phenomenal site, she got so excited. And it she, must be like liquid gold it, for some of these communities. It is. It's liquid gold. I mean, they know or hope that it will change their lives. Mm. Um, and this little girl was saying, Maji, Maji, she w wanted to drink the water. Maji is uh, water in Swahili. Mm. And we had to wait a little while because we had to wait to make sure that it was potable. And when it was, uh, we went to the well and I filled up a big bottle of water and I picked her up and I held her while she drank that bottle of water. And so I could feel the impact. How old was is she? Mm -hmm. She was about seven or eight, but she looked to be about four or five. She was malnourished. You have a five-year-old daughter. How much of the work you do is inspired by seeing her? So much of it. Um, and you know, I started this work before she was born. Um, and I remember when she was an infant um, and I was nursing her and my team was in the field at the time, I couldn't go. Um, and so they were calling me, so I was up in the middle of the night anyway, because they're calling from Kenya, and I'm feeding her, and I hung up with them, and it, it, it hit me. Um, it was the most powerful, probably, experience of my life, besides her birth, that I just can't imagine not being able to provide for my baby, yeah. and that's what all of these women go through every day. It's something we really take for granted, I think. We in completely an take it economy. for granted, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to go back to sort of the tougher times of your organization before you were given this Mother of Invention grant by yeah, Toyota. Yeah. <laughs> because I read that you have a really interesting fundraising tactic. We'll talk about what the shower challenge is. <laughs> <laughs> this is so great. Um, and I'll, I'll let you in on kind of a secret. Um, when we were, before we even raised the money for the first water system, we were sitting around on my floor and uh, trying to figure out how we were going to do it and raise money. And somebody said, hey, we should go on shower strike because, Sarah, you don't shower anyway. <laughs> I was working from home <laughs> Because you're time. a new mom. <laughs> well, no, it was way before Violet. I, have, oh, I do before. not have my okay. excuse. <laughs> <laughs> not my excuse at the time. But we thought, okay, let's just try this silly thing. And it was really successful that first year. And so now it's grown every year. And this year is our ninth shower strike campaign. And it starts on April 22nd. And we're looking for anyone and everyone to join, sign up. All you have to do is say you're not going to shower until you raise a certain amount of money. Okay. Um, and it's really popular. People love it because it's weird. <laughs> um, You've raised tens of thousands of dollars this way. We Almost a million dollars over the oh last eight years wow. through not showering. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want uh, to become of your organization? How many countries are you in? Are, are you looking at more expansion? What are, your, what are your ambitions right now? Thank you for asking that. This is a really uh, incredible year for us in large part because of Toyota, um, because we get to move into new countries this year. And we're also developing a technology that um, community members themselves will be able to use to troubleshoot any issues that they have with their water system. So that patent was just filed, so we're really excited to launch that. And do you still go out into the field, and, and do you bring your daughter? How, how do you manage all that? I don't get to bring her yet. Um, she already has her passport, though, so <laughs> we're ready. She's ready. She's so ready. And I do go two or three times a year, and I love it. It's the best part of my job. It's so hard to be away from her, but she knows the drill. Such important work. Sarah thank Evans, you. thank you so much, and congratulations again on being a 2017 Mother of Invention. Thank it's you great so to meet much. you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.